for you. I think you enjoyed your previous class reading the trial, a script of a play. Now, just have a recap of the class. Hold on, before going for the recap, let's see the objectives of this session. Come on. Objectives. The student will come to know how to enact the play, the trial and write the script of a play. He can edit the script and finally, he will come to know what is William Shakespeare's Antony's speech. Ok children, now you are so excited to recap the previous class. Yeah, I know. Then come with me and watch this video. No, 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 no. She is a great woman. She is a great woman. At the age of 19, she entered the world. At the age of 19, she fought for her people. This is not correct, my lord. This is not correct. No, no, no. You leave all those things. Let the accused be brought. Let the accused be brought in. The accused, the accused, let her be brought in. Don't John. Thank you, my lord. You look very pale today. Are you not well? I am well enough, but the bishop sent me some cup and it made me ill. I am sorry. I told him to take her after. You meant to be good to me, I know, but it is a fish that does not agree with me. The English thought you were trying to poison me. What? No, oh, my lord. They are determined that I shall be burnt as a witch. And they sent a doctor to cure me, but he for brain to bleed me, because the silly people believe a witch magic leaves her if she is bred. So he abused me. I do you leave me in the hands of the English? I should be the hands of the church. Why must I be chained by the feet? Are you afraid? Are you afraid I'll fly away? Woman, oh it's not fair to question the court, that's to question you. Okay, you were unchained. Didn't you try to escape by jumping from a tower 60 feet high? You cannot reach. How may I arrive? I suppose because the tower was not so high. It has grown every day since you began asking me question about it. Why did you jump on the tower? How do you know that I jumped? Why did you leave the tower? Why would anybody leave the prison if they could get out? You tried to escape. Of course, I did. But not for the first time either. If you leave the door of the cage open, Anybody will fly away. Am I right, my lord? Call the attention of the court. Please hold my lord. Am I heretic? Am I heretic because I try to escape from the prison? He calls like that, my lord. If in the hands of the church, if you against the church, so you are right, see? It is a great nonsense. No one be a fool like you. Do you hear, my lord? Upon your excursion by this woman. John, you are harming yourself by giving these silly answers. But you are not talking sense to me. If you are reasonable, I will be reasonable. This is not yet in order. You forgot the master promoter that the proceedings have not been formally opened. The time for question. After she has gone on to the gospels and tell us the whole truth. You make me to swear again and again. I will do that. But I can't tell the whole truth. The God doesn't allow me. You can't understand me. This argument has been down. Nine times I will swear again and again. But now, I will not swear. I am not swear. My lord, she should be put to the torture. You hear John, that is what happens to Abdurrahim. You think before answer. Has she been shown the instruments? They are ready, my lord. <laughs> Even if they are my body, you will get nothing more. What more is that? That you could understand. If you hurt me, I will tell anything you like. But finally I will take it back. So, no use. There is much in that. We should proceed mercifully. But the torture is customary. It must not be applied unwantedly. If the accused will confess voluntarily, its use can't be justified. But this is unusual and irregular. She refuses to take the oath. Do you want to torture the world for your happiness? But it is not happiness. It is the law. It is customary. It is always done. This is not so, master. Except when the requests are carried on by people, who don't know their legal business? She is their heretic. It is always done. 
Let it stop today. If it is not a necessary, doctors and patients were sent for women to save her soul. We shall not send the executioner to torture her. My lord is merciful, but it's not correct. You are noodle. So last time is your rule. Ha! You call me noodle? Noodle, 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 noodle. Patience, master, patience. I fear you will be soon too terribly avenged. Meanwhile, let us not be moved by the rough side of a shepherd lass's tongue. No, I am no shepherd lass, so I have helped him in a sheep and I can maintain my house also. This is not a time for vanity, John. You stand in a great peril. I know it, I know it. Have I not been punished for my vanity? If I had not won gold circuit in the battle, today I should not have been here in front of you. But that the English foolish rascal would have pulled me backwards off my horse. So, today you are seeing me. If you are so clever at women's work, why do not stay home to find you it? There are many women to do it, but there is nobody to do my work. Understood? John, I am going to ask you one question. Will you surrender yourself to church or not? Will you accept the God's church or not? I am a faithful girl of the church. I will obey the church. You will. There is nothing impossible. Sit down, John. John is against the church. She has to be punished. It's difficult to prison her. The church has decided to set her fire. That will be announced. John has been brought. Set in fire. Hey, surprised? How is it? It's an act of a trial given by your friends. See, classroom is a theater. If you want to enlighten your language, use it wherever it is possible. So, uh, now think about the assignment given by your teacher in the previous session. Now, we'll edit the script of a play. Assignment of previous class. Prepare a script of a play on any topic given by your teacher. So, some of your friends are editing the script. Do you want to see that? How they are doing? Come with me to the class. <laughs>
have you checked your friends? Yes. Did you find any changes? Yes. So let's once again. Yes. yes. <clears throat> what is missing here? Tail. First one. Tail. Right. Tail. Okay. Mm. Now second one. Next, uh, proper 
observed your friends helping each other in editing the script. Now, I will briefly summarize it for you. Come on, let us do that. A script of a play. A script is a written version of a play. Script of a play consists of dialogues, stage directions should be written in brackets. Layout of a script consists of title, scenes where think about the characters to know how they could speak. So, I think now it is clear to you children how to write a script of a play. Now, let me ask a question. Whenever you think about a play or a drama in English, whom do you remember? Do you know anyone? A good playwright or a script writer? Yeah, the one and only one whom we remember is the great William Shakespeare. And when the action takes, characters, brief explanation about them at the start should be given. Details of their age, occupation etc. is briefly explained. Late ended character to be introduced by enter and exit if the character leaves. Next plot. Plot consists of introduction. The story starts here and then second one problem. Conflict or crisis at the center of the play is the problem. Finally, resolution. Resolution is nothing but a solution for the conflict. Next, the most important is dialogue writing. A good dialogue is central to the convincing drama. And then, to make it sound realistic, you need to read it out loud to hear what it sounds like. Think about the characters to know how they could speak. So, I think now it is clear to you children how to write a script of a play. Now, let me ask a question. Whenever you think about a play or a drama in English, whom do you remember? Do you know anyone? A good playwright or a script writer? Yeah, the one and only one whom we remember is the great William Shakespeare. William Shakespeare. He is a great English poet and a playwright. He is the greatest writer and a dramatist in English language. He was born on April 23rd, 
1564. He died on April 23rd, 1616. He is often called England's national poet and the Barn of Avon. His surviving writings consist of 38 plays and 154 sonnets, two long narrative poems and several other poems. Now let's see some of his writings. The first one, Othello. Next, The Tempest. And next, The Merchant of Venice. Next, Hamlet. And Julia Caesars. Yeah, Julia Caesars. Have you heard about it? This is one of the greatest writings of it. It is somewhat connected to your text. We are going to study something a part of it. Do you want to know more about Caesars? Come, I will explain you. Julia Caesars. Julia Caesars. The action begins in February 44 BC. Julia Caesars has just re-entered Rome after a victory in Spain over the sons of his old enemy Pompey the Great. A spontaneous celebration has interrupted and been broken up by his two political enemies. It soon became apparent from their words that powerful and secret forces are working in his Caesars. Caesars appears attended by a train of friends and supporters and is worn by a soothsayer too. Beware the ills of March. But he ignores the warning and leaves for the games and races marking the celebration of the feast of Lupaca. After Caesar's departure, only two men remain behind. Marcus Brutus, a close personal friend of Caesar's, and Cassius, a long time political enemy of Caesar's. Both men are of aristocratic origin and see the end of their ancient privilege in the Caesar's political reforms. So, they plan for the assassination of Caesar's. Cassius cautiously inquires about Brutus' feelings. If a conspiracy were to unseat Caesar's, he finds Brutus not altogether ignores the notion. Brutus shares some aim with Cassius but does not wish to be any further moved. The two men part promising to meet again for further discussions. Cassius has gathered together a group of disgruntled and discredited aristocrats who are only too willing to assassinate Caesar. Partly to gain the support of the respectable element of Roman society, Cassius pursues Brutus to head the conspiracy and Brutus agrees to do so. Shortly afterwards, plans were made at a secret meeting in Brutus' orchard. The date is set. It will be on the day known as the Aegis of March, the 15th day of the month. Caesar's to be murdered by the Senate chambers by the concealed daggers and swords of the assembled conspirates. Assassination of Julius Caesars. Hearing of Caesar's murder, Mark Antony 
Caesar's closest friend begs permission to speak at Caesar's funeral. Brutus grants this permission over the objections of Cassius and delivers his own speech first, confident that his words will convince the populace of the necessity of for Caesar's death. After Brutus leaves, Antony begins his speech. Yeah, children, this is reading B of your unit theater. Antony's speech. Let's have a detailed explanation about this poem. Come, I will explain you simple manner. Antony's speech. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. The evil that men do lives after them. The good is often interred with their bones. So, let it be with Caesar's. The noble Brutus had told you, Caesar was ambitious. If it were so, it was a grievous fault. And grievously hard, Caesar answered it. Here, on the leaves of Brutus and the rest, Bru for Brutus is an honorable man. So, are they all honorable men? Come I to speak in Caesar's funeral. He is my friend, faithful and just to me. But Brutus says he was ambitious. And Brutus is an honorable man. He had brought many captives home to Rome. Whose ransoms did the general coffers fell? Did this is Caesar's seem ambitious? When that poor have cried, Caesar's had wept. Ambition should be made of sterner stuff. Yet Brutus says he was ambitious and Brutus is an honorable man. You did all see that on the looper call. I thrice presented him a kingly crown which he did thrice refused. Was this ambition? Yet, Brutus says he was ambitious and sure, he is an honorable man. I speak not to disprove what Brutus speak, but here I am to speak what I do know. You all did love him once, not without cause. What cause withholds you then to mourn for him? O judgment, though art fled to British beasts, and men have lost their reason, bear with me. My heart is in the coffin there with Caesar's. And I must pause till it come back to me. Okay, so now I think you got an idea about the poem. Now, just uh, tell me what kind of a person is this Brutus? And what do you think about the friendship between Antony and Caesar? Whom do you prefer? What do you think about Cassius? And overall, what the thoughts might have been gone in the mind of William Shakespeare while writing this poem? What do you want to show 
and how was it expressed. I will simply summarize it to you. Come. Throughout this page, Antony very effectively uses rhetorical questions and repetition and verbal irony to say sway his audience. His insistence that Brutus is an honorable man takes on a tone of powerful sarcasm when juxtaposed against Caesar's good deeds and Brutus betrayal of him. And Antony repeats several times that Brutus is an honorable man. Here, if the reader could read Antony's mind, it is very clear that he does not believe that. Antony says that the good men do is often interred with their bones. That is right. Good men's offers always enters with the bones. And then he reminds of all the great things Caesar's did. People still love Caesar's, dead or not, and Antony is trying to convince them that through their love of Caesar's, they can grow to love him. Now, children, one of your friends enacted this poem. Shall we see that? How she represented it? Let me run else. I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. The evil that men do leaves after them. The good is often interred with their bones. So, let it be with Caesar. The noble Brutus had told you Caesar was ambitious. If it was so, it was a grievous fault. And grievously had Caesar answered it. Here, on the leave of the Brutus and the rest, for Brutus is an honorable man. So, are they all? All are honorable men. I come to speak in Caesar's funeral. He was my friend, faithful and just to me. But the Brutus says he was ambitious. And the Brutus is honorable man. He had brought many captives home to Rome. Whose ransoms did the general cap coffers fill? Did this in Caesar seem ambition? Did this in Caesar seem ambitious? When the, the poor have cried, Caesar hath wept. Ambition should be made of sterner stuff. Yet Brutus says he was ambitious. And the Brutus is horrible man. You all did see that on the Lupercal. I thrice presented him a kingly crown. Which did he thrice refuse? Was this ambition? Was this ambition? And Brutus says he was ambitious. And the Brutus is honorable man. I speak not to disprove what Brutus spoke. But here I speak what I do know. You all did love him once. Not without cause. O oh, judgment, thought fled to Brutus beast. And men lost their reason. Bear with me. My heart is in coffin there with Caesar. And I must pause till it comes back to me. Okay. You might have enjoyed. Always utilize the classroom theater to enlighten your language. Whenever there is a scope, go on doing what your friend did there. But now it is time to discuss glossary meanings of certain words. Let it be clear to you so that you can understand poem quite clearly. Glossary. Evil. Causing harm to someone. Interred. Nothing but buried. Grievous. Very severe and serious. 
brutish, cruel or like an animal. Oh, very nice. So, now you have a good glance on the poem. And now you try to enact the same poem in your classroom theatre, so that you can enjoy your class. Moreover, try to be like Caesar's and Antony, not like Brutus and Cartius. So, friendship is that which helps you throughout your life. Take a model of Caesar's and Antony's friendship. Thank you. Bye-bye children. Meet you in the next session.